Good evening and welcome to the June 19th regular meeting of council. The city of Parksville recognizes the people of the Coast Salish Nations and their traditional territory upon which we gather with gratitude. First item on the agenda tonight is the adoption of the minutes of the council meeting held June the 5th. Do I have a mover and a seconder? Moved by Councillor Powell, seconded by Councillor Patterson. Are there any errors or omissions? All those in favor, opposed, thank you, that is carried. The next item we have is the, uh, that the uh, June 19th council meeting agenda be approved. I need a mover and a seconder. Moved by Councillor Oates, seconded by Councillor Powell. Any additions, deletions, omissions? Seeing none, all those in favor? Thank you, that is carried. I just want to point out that uh, we have two councillors absent this evening, in, in one case due to illness, and another case due to being too far away from the, uh, from the city to get back in time. We have one delegation tonight, and it's from the Royal Canadian Legion, the Mount Arrowsmith branch number 49, and it has to do with a permissive taxation exemption application. And I'm uh, delighted to welcome Mr. Donald Livingston of the Royal Canadian Legion, Mount Arrowsmith branch number 49. Mr. Livingston, would you please take a seat and turn on the microphone? Welcome. Uh, your Worship and members of council, as the uh, mayor has indicated, I am here on behalf of Branch 49. I'm a member of the Legion. I'm going to ask you to put the microphone as close to you as you can. And my purpose tonight, as I say, is to advance our claim for um, a tax exemption for 2018, uh, pursuant to the uh, uh, provincial legislation in that regard. The primary purpose of Branch 49, as it is of all legions, is to provide <clears throat> funds for donations to veterans, their families, and the public at large, as well as to provide a place where veterans and other members can gather and socialize. Branch 49 also operates uh, an, uh, an entity known as the Lone Cupboard, from which wheelchairs, canes, crutches, walkers, transfer benches, etc. Uh, used by the infirm and elderly are available to the public at large. Monetary donations for same are requested but are not mandatory. The need for such services would appear to be obvious and Branch 49 is unaware of the availability of any such service elsewhere. And if I could f refer you to, I, I'm, I'm going to assume that you all have my package which was presented. If I refer you to page three, the, the number three in the upper right hand corner, the heading uh, value to the community. And what we have there is a short list of certain items that are available commercially and the daily, weekly, and monthly cost to the public if they were to take advantage of uh, a commercial uh, company leasing them. Those items, together with uh, numerous others, are available at our loan covered free. Um, whether you are a member of the Legion or not. We maintain an inventory of approximately 800 different items, approximately 400 of which are out at any given time. Um, it should be noted that one of our greatest supporters in this endeavor is an outfit called Life Support, which you may or may not know is just over here, uh, whose local business, which both rents and sells this type of equipment, not only do they not consider us a competitor, they provide us with repair services, usually for free, and steep discounts on any, item, any items we need to repair or replace. <clears throat> the services provided by Branch 49 are all, and I emphasize the word all, run by volunteers. Volunteers operate the loan cupboard, run the meat draw, the bingo, and the annual poppy drive. Branch 49 does operate, does operate a licensed lounge and receives additional revenue from renting its hall and other amenities. Without these revenues, we would not be able to meet our operational overhead, which in turn would prevent the branch from using its premises to earn the income from gaming events and the poppy campaign, 100% of which is returned to the community through charitable donations. It's of primary importance that council realize that all of the monies obtained through gaming and other fundraising 
events are returned to the community not one penny of donations is used for administrative or operational purposes and if i could refer you to page four you see there a list of donations by our branch over the last in some cases seven years in other cases nine <clears throat> gaming and special events uh, from 2008 through 216 totaling $175,630. The Ladies Auxiliary for a seven year period starting in 2011 have contributed almost 100,000. Uh, during this period we have paid uh, bursaries to Bellina Secondary School totaling 27,000 and the poppy funds for the, this period in question total over $301,000 with a grand total of 606,340 for the period in question. The exemption from the property tax is granted by the city for 2014, 2015, and 2016 have gone a long way towards enabling our branch to continue to serve our community in ways and with amounts that no other organization does. Legions in Courtney, Qualicum, Lanceville, Esquimalt, and Langford have been granted exemptions and pay no property taxes. We are not setting a precedent. Legion Branch 49 has contacted the owner of its neighbor, the Rod and Gun, and has been assured that the Rod and Gun does not consider the Legion to be its competitor with respect to bar or food sales. And I have attached uh, the required financial statements, uh, a budget, and uh, the NPO information return for 2016. I'd be happy to take any questions. Members of Council, Councillor Powell. Thank you, Your Worship. Thank you very much for your presentation. Um, so you answered one of my questions. You were granted permissive tax for last year. Like everybody else was, ma'am. Um, prior to that, it was 100%. Last year, for reasons that are still unknown to me, it was 89.7, I believe, which it was the same for all of the applicants, the churches, the SOS, we all got the same exemption with 89.7, I believe. Uh, the only 100% exemption we see receiver was the Long Bowling Club. And so uh, that's that's because we've changed our permissive tax. So I understand. Right. And so uh, you're requesting the same permissive tax this year, or you're looking for 100%? Well, uh, we're not, we're I'm pretty sure we're not likely to get 100%. So. We are simply seeking that to which we are entitled. Okay. So through you to uh, Rector uh, Mr. Butterworth. And so one of the things that we did for the curling club is they don't have to come back every year. And yeah. I know that you've been here every year with the That's same right. information. And I'm wondering if there's a way that we can grant this without having the Legion have to come and do a presentation every year because they come with the same information and we reach the same conclusion and I think granting them whatever the percentage is without. Is there some way that we can fix that in the permissive tax? Ms. Comas. Uh, yes, Your Worship, through to Councillor Powell. Um, the Legion comes each year on their own, not because they're required to come, but because they choose to come. Um, their application is considered in the same way all other applications for permissive tax exemptions and are presented to council in a report in the fall, so. Follow up. So just for clarification, if they didn't come and do a presentation, then that wouldn't uh, put their permissive tax at risk? No, it would not. Any, any further questions from members of council for the delegation? Well, thank you, Mr. Livingston, and thank you. Thank, thank you, the Legion, for all that you do for our community. Very much appreciated. Thank you. The next item we have is a follow-up report to consideration of a development variance permit and development permit for a mixed commercial and multi-use, multi-unit residential building, 272 Island Highway West. Before I call upon a mover and a seconder, I want to invite individuals who wish to speak uh, anybody who wants to come to the microphone and state their name and specific address for the uh, for the record on this particular item, 
Any, any members of the public? Please come down and give us your name and your, uh, your address, please, for the record. I believe the microphone is still on, so make yourself at home. Oh, thank you. My name is Morel Marquis. I'm at 309 Morrison Avenue. I'm one of the unit owners of Azalea Terrace. We're on the corner of Morrison and Lombardi, which would be right next door to this development. Oops. Is this better? Okay. Would you like to repeat or you're all set? Okay. Um, can I ask my questions now or? Okay. Um, I did have a chance to look at the application. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, one of the areas that I have a concern with is the elimination of the off-street loading space. What will be the new plan? Because there were going to be some commercial space. People are going to have things delivered. And where are they going to park those vehicles to deliver their products or services? Mr. Russell, do you want to answer that? If I may, um, as part of the prior rezoning application, a loading bay is going to be is required to be constructed on Lombardi itself, as well as 11 new um, angled parking spaces. I am looking at page 34, which has got the parking plan. Whereabouts on Lombardi? If I may, it probably shows up a little better on page 45. Um, there's a little sort of uh, bump between the two um, sets of angled parking spaces. That is a loading bay. And that is going to be a space reserved just for loading? That is correct. Okay. And the reason I raise my concern is Lombardi right now is um, lots of traffic. We, as an owner of the Azalea Terrace for one of the units, uh, I find it very difficult to have access to our parkade in and out. People are parking on the sidewalk and blocking our view, so we want to enter our parkade or leaving. Uh, we're getting a lot of um, verbal abuse from individuals just parking there and they think it's their right and we try to tell them that's a sidewalk because it's not a raised sidewalk, it's just a flat surface and they just give us the look and sometimes just, you know, it's not very... Um, it's something I would like to have addressed because we're going to be concerned that, yes, we want that development. We're welcome to have it there, but having more traffic, that's going to increase a lot of issues. And that's our concern. So if that could be addressed. Yeah. Anything else? No, that will do it. Thanks very Thank much. Thank you. Anyone else have any comments to make? Wants to come to the microphone at this point in time? Okay, Council, I'm going to ask for a mover and a seconder before I get Mr. Russell to give us the details. Moved by Councillor Burden, seconded by Councillor Powell. Mr. Russell, would you please give us the background on this issue? Sure. So if I may, Your Worship, for Council consideration this evening are two items. One of them is a development variance permit to relax the required number of off-street parking spaces uh, from 64 to 53. As noted in the analysis section of the report, uh, a traffic impact assessment was undertaken and the demands of the proposed development would require uh, 48 spaces. Um, in addition to the 53 spaces provided on, on the property, another 11 spaces are provided on the road plus the loading bay that was noted earlier. Um, as part of the variance request, um, it, in keeping with the existing sort of asf asphalt surface that is in place, a relaxation from three to zero meters is proposed along the northern property boundary that abuts Island Highway West. Um, since the prior council meeting, notice has now been undertaken uh, through mail out to properties, uh, owners and tenants within 50 meters of the site. Um, following the prior staff report, one correspondence uh, was re was distributed to council that was received actually prior to notice um, no other correspondence were received and um, obviously we had one person speak this evening um, should council consider the variance then subsequent to that there is a development permit for consideration of issuance thank you members of council any questions for mr russell we had a presentation a number of weeks ago seeing no further I'm going to call uh, for all of the recommendations, which I believe I can take all four. All those in favor? Opposed? Thank you. That is carried unanimously. Okay. 
the next item, Mr. Russell, again, I need a mover and a seconder for the recommendations. Do I have a mover and a seconder? Moved by Councilor Rhodes, seconded by Councilor Powell. Mr. Russell, would you please give us the background on the issue regarding consideration of a development permit for shoreline restoration at the community park, 193 Ireland Highway East? If I may, Your Worship, for council consideration is um, a development, the issuance of a development permit to allow for the remediation of approximately 650 square meters of eroded shoreline um, and beach area to be uh, restored. Um, this includes the re restoration of a slope um, in, in accordance with the predominant slope in Parksville Bay using such materials as cobbles and other um, beach shore. Um, uh, aggregate materials, as well as the um, installation of um, some logs, associated rock anchors, uh, as well as landscaping on, uh, with native vegetation, a small protective fence, and the um, inclusion of some rock armoring that abuts to the adjacent property. Any questions for Mr. Russell or any members of staff? Yes, Councillor Burden. Do we have a plan in this particular remediation to deal with the debris that's going to wind up on our beach as as the erosion continues? If I may, Your Worship, I'm going to defer that to the Director of Engineering. That's the, the ultimately the, the project head. Mr. Figuera? If I may, Your Worship, uh, through Councillor Burden. So uh, just for clarification, you're talking about ongoing uh, debris that's going to end up there. Um, this project will uh, certainly clean up what's there. There's some uh, old um, uh, lock locks that have been there, tumbled over, and there's also some outlet piping that we're going to remove. Uh, once we're finished, then, then again it becomes uh, an ongoing, uh, um, as the rest of the shore is, a maintenance issue if there's buildup of materials from year to year at that point. Uh, at some point we'll, in the future, uh, we'll have to decide whether it's, it's going to be a, another capital investment we're going to have to make to maintain that, but uh, the proposed works are intended to last, uh, uh, you know, in the neighborhood uh, beyond 10 years, so um, debris that ends up building up at the point there in between that, the next capital investment there is going to be uh, an operational investment to, to keep it clean. Councillor Powell. Thank you, Your Worship. Through you to the Director of Engineering. I had a break. Thanks. Anyways, so I see that uh, Flinro hasn't uh, uh, reviewed and authorized the application. So the reason you're doing this now before that is because we have to do the work from June 1st to September. In case we get it between now and then, we can just hit the road. Thanks. If, if I may respond uh, through the microphone, uh, Your Worship. Uh, yes, the, uh, we are waiting for approvals from uh, uh, Ministry of Forest Lands, Parks and Natural Resources Operations. Uh, there's two um, two permits we're, we're hoping to get. Uh, we're still waiting for that. There has been, in, in my report, I, I can identify that, that uh, we've been given some indication that uh, hopefully by the end of this week uh, we will get some approval to proceed. Um, in, when, I, when I provide my report, I'll give a little bit more depth on, on the reason we, uh, we are proceeding right now with uh, um, a uh, pre-qualification and, uh, and whatnot, but I'll, I'll get into that more in, in my report. Okay, thank you. I want to, um, I want to commend staff. This has been a, a long-standing, long-duration uh, negotiation with the provincial authorities and um, I think that, um, you know, we had to, uh, this has been ongoing for far too long, and there's going to be some need at UBCM to perhaps talk to some ministry officials like we did last year, because there needs, we need more clarification and we need more, uh, I'm going to use the word support. Councilor Rhodes. Uh, thank you, Worship. <clears throat> I, have, I have a couple of questions about the uh, the, uh, the other pieces of work that are being done there. There's an abandoned corrugated steel pipe. What, what was that steel pipe in there? What was it for? Does anybody know? Mr. Figueroa? Oh. I do. It's, it's it's storm drainage, and it can it'll be con it, it's for the short term. It would continue to be storm drainage, 
the long term plan is to eventually replace it. Okay. Okay, well, I think there's two pipes that are talked about in the report. There's one there's talks about an abandoned corrugated steel pipe is proposed to be removed. And that as well, an existing asbestos cement storm water outlet pipe is proposed to be replaced with a high density polyethylene pipe. So with respect to the first pipe that's being removed and not replaced, what was that pipe for? If I may, Your Worship, through to Councillor Oates. Yeah, the, the, um, perhaps the wording could have been uh, more clear, but the existing uh, corrugated steel and asbestos pipe there uh, represents what used to be the old sanitary outfall for the city before the interceptor was built to take it to the treatment plant. It's since, since that treatment plant was built, the RDN treatment plant, uh, um, it became a storm outfall for the park. Now, um, sections of that uh, over the years have been damaged and crushed. Uh, some of the corrugated steel that's there is completely rusted out, been replaced uh, by asbestos pipe. So there's sections of corrugated steel, old corrugated okay. steel sections of asbestos pipe, but it's all that old storm out flow. But it's only really one pipe. So all that's going to be abandoned and whatever is exposed right now will be removed and then we'll have a new uh, polyethylene pipe. But, but that's not going to be uh, uh, hooked into the system. Uh, at the moment, we're, we're going to, uh, as, as part of the, uh, the master plan for the community park, um, we're going to be uh, identifying where all the future uh, drainage works are going to be in the park. And uh, once that's done, there'll be another future uh, storm um, project coming up in the capital plan that ties the new pipe we're putting in as part of, part of these shoreline works with the rest of the drainage in the park. But uh, we couldn't do that at this time because we don't know exactly what the future drainage uh, uh, works are going to look like in the park. The reason I'm curious about it is because on page uh, 70 of our agenda there at the bottom of the report, or at the bottom of that page, the report from current environmental, they speak, uh, they speak to that uh, outfall and they say the implications of this outfall on nearby sensitive habitat has not been assessed as part of this project but may be subject to future investigation once activated. And uh, I'm wondering, you know, wouldn't it be too bad if we found out then that it was a bad thing? Wouldn't it be better for us to find out now? Um, if I may, Your Worship, I'm, I'm just uh, reviewing that section right now. Let's see. Well, I would, if I may, Your Worship, I would suggest that the um, um, the consultant felt it necessary to put that in there, but we're not changing uh, anything there. We're still discharging as we are now, storm runoff. We're also, as part of the community park uh, drainage, going to be considering uh, um, uh, how to clean up the uh, storm water before it gets into, so it's just going to be better than it was. Okay, and just one final question. Uh, in the uh, on page 55 of our, uh, our agenda two, it talks that First Nations consultation has occurred. What did that look like? If I may, Your Worship, there was uh, it was twofold. Um, the, the city, uh, um, on behalf of this project and the residents of Parksville, directly contacted uh, Nanu's First Nation and uh, Qualicum First Nation. Um, and had uh, discussions and talks about the project. And uh, there was some agreements made in terms of uh, oversight uh, during excavation of this, this work and only during the excavation portion. We're going to have a representative from Nanus and a representative from Qualicum on site uh, to observe our excavation. Um, um, and, and they will be paid to do that. Um, the ministry has gone as a normal part of their process, the ministry has gone directly to the First Nations groups uh, uh, to present the project as well. But uh, we we went to these groups beforehand to to to, uh, anyway, to build a relationship to answer their questions directly, and that seemed to work out quite well. 
There was an on-site visit, and the uh, the feedback I got from the First Nations is they were quite uh, quite pleased, and that they were consulted and continue will continue to work on the project. Yeah, thank you for all the answers. I really appreciate that there was meaningful cons consultation. Thank you. Yeah, I, I do too. Any further questions for anybody? Seeing that, I'm going to call the vote. All those in favor? Thank you. That's carried. Okay, Mr. Figuera, I need a mover and a seconder for the Arbutus Point foreshore protection pre-approval construction works. Councillor Burden, seconded by Councillor Oates. Mr. Figuera, background on the issue, please. If I may, Your Worship, um, before Council is a report to obtain approval for additional funds, uh, pre-qualification contractor list, and pre-authorization for staff to award the upcoming tender uh, to a maximum of the revised budget amount, which will be 198,151 plus tax. Um, as we've been discussing, there's been extensive uh, review process uh, with the ministry um, regarding required approvals and permits. There's two approvals outstanding. Uh, one comes under the Land Title Act and permits occupation of the works on Crown land. The other is under the Wildlife Act and permits for the work to take place uh, in the wildlife management area. Um, the Ministry has given some indication that the approvals will be forthcoming by the end of this week. However, no other information has been provided. Uh, additional funds requested are to comply with the additional design requirements imposed by the Ministry, account for the increased construction costs and in the addition of an access road over parklands to facilitate safe construction during the summer months. Um, the staff have completed a uh, contractor pre-qualification process as per uh, purchasing policy 6.14. Uh, to identify qualified contractors and seek council approval of the list. Also, staff are asking council uh, for pre-authorization to award the upcoming tender to a maximum revised budget amount of 198,151 plus tax. Uh, it is envisioned that these steps will help uh, the construction schedule meet the summer construction window, and the recommendations are as per the report. Questions from council for Mr. Figuera? Okay, seeing none, I'm going to call the vote. All those in favor of the four recommend... I'm sorry, did I miss somebody? Oh, Councillor Councillor Patterson. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, towards our Director of Engineering, do we know the time frame of this particular project? If I may, Your Worship, through Councillor Patterson, uh, we have July and August to complete this work. That's the window that we're working towards. Um, that That's both covers both the DFO requirements and the ministry requirements. So that's the total length of time that, what happens if it's not completed? Which was technically my first question. Uh, all, all we can do is, is try to set it up so that we can meet, uh, meet that timeline. And uh, um, in, in, in some projects you run into situations, uh, we're digging in, uh, in the ground there. Anytime you're doing work in the ground, there's always the potential for something to come up. We'll, we'll have to demonstrate to the, minist the ministry and the DFO that we're doing everything we possibly can to meet that window. And uh, we'll ask for forgiveness uh, if, if we have to, hopefully don't, but have to, uh, to complete the work outside that window. Um, if the If the work is significantly outside that window, it may mean that we have to stop. We'll be, uh, I can assure you that we'll be having a meeting at UBCM with the Ministry of Lands and Forests, much like we did last year. This has been a, this has been prolonged for a little bit too long. I'm not very, as mayor, I'm not very happy. Okay, I'm going to call the vote. All those in favor of the four recommendations? Opposed? Thank you. That is carried. Next report is the, uh, I need a mover and a seconder for the Communities on the Move Declaration. Councillor Burden, seconded by Councillor Rhodes. Mr. Figuera, Communities on the Move. If I may, Your Worship, um, before Council uh, is a report, uh, Communities on the Move. It's an initiative of the organization called the BC Healthy Living Alliance, uh, whose members include the Union of BC Municipalities. Um, a Communities on the Move declaration has been developed by the Communities on the Move group with the goal of creating smart, fair, and healthy transportation options for BC communities. Uh, the City of Parksville OCP and Master Transportation Plan align quite well with the, uh, uh, the Communities on the Move declaration. Um, 
we've reviewed this and we've we've had discussions with bc healthy living alliance and feel that the city is is would be in a good position to sign on to the declaration we're making no direct commitments but we are making a statement by putting our name to this that we support their ideas their ideas are based on significant funding from senior governments and i think would be a good thing for the city to do this and be seen to be promoting the similar ideas as as the bc healthy living alliance and the recommendations are as per the report any questions for mr figure fairly straightforward all those in favor of the recommendations opposed thank you that is carried um electrical vehicle vehicle charging stations for fleet vehicles uh just before i i turn this over for a mover and a seconder as you may know i'm a bit of a news junkie and it was reported to me on the radio the radio is always right that within 10 years uh dealerships are going to be obsolete there won't be any need for stop lights and stop signs because the smart vehicles are taking over i just throw that out there for what it's worth and i guess we're getting into it with the electrical vehicle charging stations do i have a mover and a seconder for the recommendations councillor oates seconded by councillor powell mr figuera would you give us the background on where we're going with electrical vehicles if i may your worship before council's report to obtain council approval for additional funds for electric vehicle charging station for fleet vehicle project the final design has now been completed and quotes for the remaining works have been received staff are seeking council approval for an additional 21,550 plus tax to be funded from the gas tax reserve to complete this project and it's because it's uh it's dealing with uh ghg emissions uh we can tap into the gas tax reserve for this project so the recommendations are as per the report I'd like to officially say yes to that. Yes, if I may, Your Worship. A spending package request for the upgrade of the Community Park Ventureland Spray Park was included in the 2017 final financial plan. The information provided to Council during the deliberations was a total expenditure of $300,000 to demolish the existing spray park and design and construct a new uh, splash park which will meet the Vancouver Island Health Requirements, Guidelines and Regulations. Included in the expenditure was uh, offsetting contributions uh, revenue to be raised by the Parksville Lions Club um, and Rotary Club Parksville AM in the amount of $100,000. After, uh, after the approval of the financial plan, staff reviewed the request for proposals and uh, through, uh, through a public VC uh, bid process and after review, it was determined that Rec Tech Industries best meet the requirements. Um, this will allow the design service to commence over the winter and spring, and construction will be complete prior to the next summer season. But we've discussed this at budget time before, yeah. Any questions from members of council? Councillor uh, Oates. Uh, this is uh, Rec Tech. Are they the same uh, folks that we had for the resurfacing of the tennis courts at that time? Uh, through your worship, that was a different company that uh, it was funded through as well.
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The city acquired 625 Pym Street in 1995 for recreational purposes. The Friends of Foster Park Society requested that council restrict the use of the dwelling unit to a caretaker's residence. Staff were then directed to negotiate a rental agreement containing an allowance for the caretaker's duties at a reduced rate. As a landlord, the city is bound by the Residential Tenancy Act and regulations, which places limits on the ability to increase rental amounts. Council would be required to provide at least three months notice and would only be able to raise the rent by in the inflation rate plus 2%, which in this case is about $38. It is considered by staff that it is quite beneficial to have a full-time caretaker living on site to provide some maintenance and added security for the park. The house is older and smaller than most of the properties currently listed for rent, so it is challenging to make very close comparisons, but staff believe the current rate of $900 with a credit of $200 for maintenance is a fair rate and recommendations are per the agenda. Fairly straightforward. It's been going on for quite some time. Any questions for Mrs. Keeler? Councillor Burden. That's a real deal. Um, at $900, it's a real deal despite the, and I don't have a problem with the $200 reduction for the, for the work done. I think as with the gradual increase in taxes, we should also be looking at a gradual increase in rental according to the Landlord and Tenants Act. Otherwise, we're going to be sit sitting in a situation where we get, you know, this is going to go on, I hope, for some time. It's, it's, a, it's a good service to the city and, and good income for the city on a, on a city-owned property. Um, I, th I think we should look at the increase of $38 uh, simply because if we don't, then we'll fall behind the market. We're already behind the market at $900, tell, uh, I'll tell you. Um, I, I am a landlord and, and, we're, and I'm behind the market and this is behind what I'm charging. So uh, I think we should increase it by the $38 and we should continue to increase it by the cost of living um, so that we keep pace. We need a motion. I want to make a motion. I, I would like to make, a, I guess, an amendment to the current motion. I'd like to make an amendment to the current motion to uh, to increase it uh, based on the allowable uh, increase in the Landlord and Tenancy Act and give the $200 credit for the work done. I have a seconder for that, seconded by Councillor Patterson. Any f discussion? Okay. Uh, no, okay, okay, I'm okay with it. I like that idea. The, the, uh, the, uh, 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 a question to, to, to staff, uh, how many other such properties do we all have, are we, do we have had any other houses that we rent out? No, I don't think so. This is the only one. Okay. Mrs. Kaler, do you want to add uh, something? We, we do have a piece of vacant land uh, adjacent to a daycare that we rent out, but it doesn't have a dwelling on it. Um, I can't think of, um, we have the Shelley Park Centre. Oh, and um, 130 Shelley, I think it is. There is a small dwelling at the end of the near Turner and Tulip, I think it is, that's also rented out. Yes, Councillor Burden. Then I'd like to make it across the board and apply to all of the city-owned properties so that we stay pace with the market. Uh, okay, Ms. Mrs. Comas, do you have a comment? Uh, yes, Your Worship, um, could we please deal with Foster Park first and then um, a rising council? Okay, yeah, all right. Motion. So I have a mover and a seconder for the $38 a month and henceforth to follow the same formula year after year. Okay. I'm going to call the question on that. All those in favor? Opposed? That's carried. Thank you. Do you want to make another motion? Your Worship, we need a vote, a motion. We need a vote on the main motion as amended. Okay. Okay, vote on the main motion. All those in favor? Opposed? Thank you. That is carried. So are we still voting? Are we going to go back to Mr. Councillor Burden's recommendation for the remaining properties? Ms. Taylor. Sorry, before we move forward, can I just clarify that it's um, inflation plus 2% as permitted by the regulations, not $38? Because that would change over time as that... Thank you. Uh, yes, I'd like to make a motion that the same increases apply to any city-owned property that is rented. Okay. 
have a seconder for that? Seconded by Councillor Oates. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Okay, thank you. Mrs. Kaler, I need a mover and a seconder. We're going to talk about smart fueling. Do I have a mover and a seconder? Moved by Councillor Powell, seconded by Councillor Rose. Mrs. Kaler, please give us the background on this issue. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. In 2016, Council received two separate delegations on fuel conservation and greenhouse gas emission reduction strategies for fossil fuel consumption. Staff were directed to investigate the response from other island municipalities with respect to labeling gas pumps and um, undertaking education campaigns to promote smart fuel consumption. <laughs> Staff were unable to find information from neighboring communities in this project, but did find some examples from Terrace, West Vancouver, and some other municipalities, um, some of which have adopted idle free bylaws to reduce vehicle emissions. Um, the province of BC also has idle free regulations uh, for uh, provincially owned properties. The city has many sustainability policies in place and recently acquired new electric vehicles as detailed earlier in this agenda. An education campaign on energy consumption has already been implemented in city facilities as council may see the signage around city hall um, advising staff to turn off their monitors and turn out lights, uh, those types of activities. Several options were identified by staff in option two. If council wishes to proceed with these or other options, a motion will be required. And recommendations are to receive the report for information. Okay, any comments, any questions for Mrs. Keeler? Being none, I'm gonna call the vote. All those in favor? Thank you, that is carried. All right, now uh, this next item, um, was prompted by your beloved mayor. Uh, we have now reached more than a halfway point in our term. If my calculations are correct and my math is not the strongest, but we've got about 17 months left in our mandate. And I asked uh, staff to provide a report in terms of three, three facets. The, past, what, what we've accomplished, what we've, what we've managed to accomplish over the last uh, two, and a, two and some odd months, years, and uh, also the, the daily operational tasks and what's left to do so that Council can have a discussion on their, its remaining priorities for the next 17 months, which I assume, if it's anything like the last 20 some odd months, it's going to go by very quickly. So, Mrs. Kaler, I need a mover and a seconder uh, for the recommendation that it be received. Moved by Councillor Powell, seconded by, do I have a seconder? Seconded by Councillor Burden. So, Mrs. Kaler, would you please uh, give us the background on this report and we'll, I'd like to move, I mean, there's a, lot, there's a lot of reading, there's a lot of detail. I'd like to move to the outstanding tasks that we have to facing after this report. But anyway, that'll be up to Council to decide, but that's my, that'll be my recommendation. Mrs. Kaler, if you will, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, so, as you mentioned, this council took office in late in 2014. Since January 2015, 813 resolutions have been passed by this council at a total of 75 open meetings, and in accordance with the legislation, 158 resolutions have been passed in 45 closed meetings. Staff provide information to council and the public in a number of different ways. As outlined in the staff report, each department outlines its significant projects and achievements for each year in an annual report. The annual budget provides a listing of all projects underway or planned for that year, as well as providing information on revenues generated from specific activities, such as licensing or inspection permits. The city has a five-year financial plan, which forecasts projects and various phases in that reporting period. The City of Parksville is unique in that it also has a 20-year capital plan, providing information on pending future projects and activities and their planned timelines. In addition to this, Council has received a full listing of all of the resolutions passed since January 2015, a separate list of projects identified by staff which we know have not yet been completed. And in order to provide a higher level of detail on the activities and responsibilities of staff on a daily basis, 
a sample table is provided outlining some of the high level projects and operational activities by the administrative services department from january twenty sixteen to may thirty first, twenty seventeen should council wish to see more information than what is currently presented as a routine activity staff would request direction on the types of information that council would like to see the frequency of reporting that would suit council's needs and the format in which council would prefer to receive the information for tonight's meeting all members of senior staff are present in council chambers in case council wishes to ask questions of any of the directors and recommendations are per the agenda so members of council how would you like to proceed i mean there are there are my preferences to go to the items that are outstanding and and uh... look at what what priorities we want to assign councillor burton and councillor this is a lot of material and thank you so much for preparing it it's uh... somewhat enlightened uh... i guess my first question is how are the how is the priority of activity determined if i could through you mister mayor to councillor burton do you mean just for the table and referred or on a daily basis there are a number of incomplete items on the list that have come from council resolutions and a number of completed items that have come from council resolutions and my question is uh... how do we determine what gets done first because they're not in chronological order that i can't determine the order yes your worship staff part of what uh... the way we determine priorities is to listen to council's conversation around the council table uh... for instance uh... council have made comments that the most important thing is what generates revenue and so we tend to look for things that generate revenue as our our top priorities uh... council has also said service to the public is extremely important and so we do our best to meet the demands of the public uh... as efficiently and effectively as we can uh... the rest of it is educated assumptions based on council uh... conversation and sometimes council direction i think one of the challenges that we as staff face is that that's probably the hardest part of the process is determining that priority uh... without specific direction from council as to this is priority one this is priority two if you're going to undertake this priority then obviously that priority is going to take a back seat and it's not going to be uh... be done in as timely a manner as it perhaps it could have been uh... it i think what staff would like to see out of this discussion is more input from council as to what your priorities are and more specific direction as to how you would like us to determine those priorities because for every new project that comes along there is something else that gets set aside or delayed in order to do it that's the re one of the reasons why i decided to do this is because as mrs comas has said you know, i think it's up to council now for the time that we've got left to look at what what those outstanding items are and what is the priority for the majority of council and i i would i would suggest that probably one thing that's been lacking and i'll take some responsibility for this is this is probably something we should have started in december or january of two thousand and fifteen so better late than never but uh... i think that that's that's where we're at today councillor oates uh... thank you worship i i really appreciate the effort that's gone into this document and i i'm a little bit concerned that we uh, set goals here tonight given two empty seats so uh... you know i i'm almost of the mind of referring this to another meeting when everybody is here and we could uh, give a bit more wholesome uh, discussion if we if the five of us split three two on an issue or something to some priority and then two other counselors come back and that changes 
the the one of the end goals out of this is to be more concise in our direction to staff and 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 so that we're not sending him in three different directions at once so uh unless we you know we can speak for those absent which i don't presume to do uh i think that maybe we should we could we could we could certainly discuss it tonight and i'm not trying to, to uh, limit the debate on it but i do really feel like this is a discussion that's more appropriate when all members of council are present i i totally agree and, and one of the things that i'd like to ask staff to do we originally uh, had a report that was prepared tabled referred items from committees and councils and it was just on um, I have I have roughly three and a half pages and I know that you put that in your report embodied with everything else so what I would like staff to do and I, I need I would need a motion for this or some kind of council approval is to re redo just this type of report that extrapolates from it doesn't it doesn't uh, impede council from having other questions regarding things we've done or other things they want to come back on but for the items that have been tabled or the items that are still pending all the dates are here i'd like to see that, that smaller report sent to all members of council to members of senior staff and then at, at that point in time at another meeting as councillor uh, oates has suggested when everybody's here we can start the discussion councillor oates uh, yeah, I, 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 I got my hands on this, I think, Thursday or maybe Friday, and, uh, and it, uh, you know, it's quite the reality check, and I think we need, I think we have a responsibility to put as much effort into discussing it as was put into creating it for us to discuss. So I, I'll move referral to a future, to the next council meeting. I'd like to. I'd like to see. Um, I certainly, second what Councillor Oates is putting forward. Um, but I'd like to see. Point of order. The documentation. Point of order. Yeah. Once it's been referred, there's no discussion. Okay. Not done. Yeah, here. From a, it's okay. We'll do it at another from meeting. A, it's fine. From, well, from a procedural perspective, yes, um, Councillor Powell is correct. But if the mover and the seconder would like to withdraw the motion temporarily and allow Councillor Burden to say his piece and then refer it, we could do it that way. I'll withdraw. Then you. I'd like to see the document that Mayor Lefebvre is talking about on a, on a, on a by-meeting basis. Um, I get asked questions about things on a regular basis and I don't always have the answers and um, rather than having to write an email and to staff or make a phone call it's nice to be able to answer the question based on the knowledge that I have from the previous meeting um, I'd also like to I'm, I'm a rev gen guy and I'd also like to, uh, to commend the planning department I spent a fair bit of time over the last several days reviewing our building permit numbers um, 2015 to 2016 saw a doubling and 2017 is looking very similar um, no it's not a dirty trick it was generated by looking at all of this paper okay. I started diving into other stuff so go ahead and make your motion it was a dirty trick the whole purpose of my motion was to have a wholesome discussion with the entire council so you'll You'll have to repeat that with the rest of council should the referral to the next council meeting pass, which I just made. I'll second. I got it. Second. Uh, in concluding on this particular matter, I want to thank I want to thank staff because Mrs. Kaler and I were constantly I I wasn't I, I had a, a really good idea of I thought what I needed. Mrs. Kaler came from time to time to pay me a visit. And uh, we sort of working together. I want to thank all of senior staff for working on this. And I know that um, I know that this will be uh, this will be a big help as we move forward in the remaining months that we have the main, remaining few 17 months remaining in our mandate. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> okay, that's been passed. All right, thanks again. That was that's a great report. Uh, we've got some. We've got a lot of new business tonight. I'm going to go last tonight because I don't have all that much. So I'm going to start with Councillor Patterson. Anything under new business? Thank you, Your Worship. Um, so just a little bit of um, history. Uh, recently, on May 15th, Council approved a request from the President of the Bellina Secondary C School Gender and Sexuality Alliance requesting Council support to paint a rainbow crosswalk in front of the school in June to promote a welcoming, safe, and inclusive community for LGBT individuals. The crosswalk crosswalk on Pym Street was painted on June 6 and received a largely positive res response from the community. So with a little bit of that um, information, it's painting of additional rail rainbow crosswalk on Highway 19A, one that in the interest of promoting an inclusive and welcoming community for residents and visitors, staff be directed to paint one of the existing crosswalks on Highway 19A near the community park in rainbow colors and two, that funding for the project be taken from council contingency. I have a seconder for that motion. Seconded by Councillor Oates. Thank you. Any discussion? Can I have one more paragraph of on that? So both myself and Councillor Beale were um, approached and asked if, a, if the second rainbow crosswalk could be painted in the downtown area near the community park. Um, staff estimate that this would cost approximately $5,500 from council contingency given the location, extra distance of the crosswalk to be painted and the fact that the work may need to be carried out at night for a better final project and for safety reasons. Thank you, I have a mover and a seconder. Councillor Burton, do you have any, you have your hand up. So just 5,000 bucks? 55. 5,500, where did I get the number 20,000 from? I have no idea, but it's relatively Okay, good with five. 5,500. Any, any further discussion or comments? Seeing none, I'm gonna call the vote. All those in favor? Thank you, Councillor Patterson. Anything else, Councillor Patterson? No, Your Worship. Um, I think, I'm trying to think if we have one more council meeting this month or not. No, I think we're done. No, this is the last one. We, we start so off on July the 5th. <laughs> Okay. which I will not be here for. Okay. I'll be on holidays. So I'll just take this time to um, to wish our graduating students uh, a happy graduation. That'll be occurring, their prom and everything, on June 29th on the Friday. Or no, the 30th, sorry, the 30th before Canada Day. And I think that's everything for me at this point in time. We had, I had an advisory design panel uh, meeting last week and met um, new um, members of that panel and um, hundreds of years of experience. It's it's very um, overwhelming at times. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Oates. Thank you, Worship. Uh, I'd like to make a motion. <clears throat> I move that the City of Parksville, in a special ceremony on National Aboriginal Day, June 21st, 2017, raise the new First Nation flag on City Hall, and that invitations to attend the ceremony be sent to the community. Just one slight uh, change. I found out late today there'll be a ceremony, but there won't be a flag. So if you want to remove the word flag, Found that out. I'm just. I apologize. Okay, I'll, re I'll re reword my notion that that the city of Parks will host a ceremony to recognize National Aboriginal Day on June 21st. Any further comments, Councillor? Um, is there any um, cost involved in the? That uh, has to be. There'll be some cost, uh, probably somewhere out of council contingency somewhere and, and I apologize again to Councillor Oates because uh, he's been away and I didn't fully brief him on the flag but we're looking at about six hundred dollars out of council contingency. Does that have to be uh, put forward in his motion? Uh, not, to not, not to exceed you. 750. I like 750. Okay 
And, and this, is, this is very special, and uh, uh, the CAO of the, the Nanus First Nations is in the audience, Mark Stevens, welcome. And uh, I, I will, this will be a first, and I want to thank Councillor Oates for his initiative on this. This will be a first, and um, it's going to be, a, it's going to be an, an interesting ceremony. Yes, Councillor? Yes, uh, thank you, Worship, uh, and uh, thank you for uh, the update. Uh, I think it's important uh, that, uh, you know, in, the, in, the, in 2017, that it's long overdue, and in the year of reconciliation, and in Canada's 150 years as a nation, and the thousands of years that we've existed here as a First Nation, that it's important that us in, uh, in roles of leadership like this do what we can. And this uh, was, a, was a, a small attempt at that, and uh, I really hope that uh, we can make some constructive uh, uh, efforts together in the future with our partners and our First Nation community so that we uh, truly can be uh, a community that we are in this country. Very well said, Councillor Oates, very well said. And uh, members of senior staff, and members of council, of course, you're all invited. It's 10 o'clock in this room on, on Wednesday, the 21st. So on that note, I'm going to call the vote. All those in favor? Opposed, thank you. That is carried unanimously. Anything else, Councillor Oates? And the mayor apologizes once again. The mayor's got a great memory, but it's short. Okay. Councillor, Councillor Powell. Thank you, Your Worship. I would like to make a motion for tax release for, for, for low-income housing. The Council provide a grant of $1,100 to the Parksville Lines Housing Society, 205 Jensen Avenue East, and a grant of 325 to the Kinsley Low Rental Housing Society, 312 Hearst Avenue West, to offset 2017 property and parks parcel taxes for low-income residential purposes, that both the aforementioned grant amounts be taken from the Council Contingency Fund. Um, thank you, Councillor. I was approached by the Kingsley Manor folk and the Huswick folk, and they simply uh, they simply don't have the money. They're, uh, they've they've never uh, never been budgeted for, and they don't have the money. So that's that's the simple reason. Yes. So it's like it's fourteen hundred and twenty-five dollars or something, to, and uh, we still have that much in council contingency. We're not going to run a deficit, no. are we? No. <laughs> okay. Seeing no other no other questions, I'm going to call the vote. All those in favor? Thank you. That is carried. Is that it, Councillor? Councillor Burden. Thank you, Your Worship. I've got a couple of things. One that you gave me. One that's my own. Um, so we'll start with uh, everybody's favorite topic, marijuana. Uh, whereas the government of Canada announced its intent to legalize marijuana use by July 1, 2018, and whereas municipalities have to consider the options for business license processes, land use, zoning regulations, and appropriate fees, and whereas UBCM Resolution A2 is endorsed in 2016 requesting all orders of government be granted adequate time to align and integrate local regulations with new federal laws, it resolved that UBCM request an update on the status of the proposed regulatory regime and implementation steps and express the urgency of receiving this information in a timely manner in order for municipalities to be in a position to respond. Apparently, there's a sh they they can't they won't be able to they they know this for a fact they won't be able to meet the demand, so we we've got a real we've got a real challenge on our hands and it's all going to come to roost at the municipal local government level. So it's important that we get our and while I was at FCM by the way I'll talk more about that in my comments. But while I was at FCM, marijuana the federal government didn't want to touch it with a barge pole. So, Councillor Powell, I beg to differ, Your Worship. I think there's a ton of marijuana available in this community. <laughs> yes, but is it legal? That's the question. Okay, any any further comments, Councillor Burden? No? 
I just want to call the vote in that case. All those in favor? Thank you, that is carried. You're on, Councillor Burton. One Thank more you. time. So, uh, among other things that I've been looking at over the last little while is, is uh, how to, the, the whole resource allocation issue is, has been very big in my, my thinking recently. We have a bylaw, bylaw 1436, under the transportation bylaws, and it says that every owner or occupier of real property is required to remove snow or ice from the roof or other part of any structure on the property where the location of that structure is such that it is reasonable to expect that the snow or ice on it may fall onto any sidewalk or highway within 12 hours of the cessation of any snowfall or storm event that caused the accumulation. 9.3 says an owner or occupier of land shall maintain a sidewalk and boulevard adjacent to their property and in particular shall a remove accumulations of filth, leaves, rubbish, discarded materials, hazardous objects and materials which obstruct a drainage facility. In keeping with the reasonable standard of maintenance in the area, keep grassed areas trimmed and free of all weeds keep in good repair and up to city standards, all driveway crossings, trim and maintain all plantings, remove all filth, leaves, rubbish, discarded materials, hazardous objects and materials from all boulevards and sidewalks. I'm concerned about the development of a double standard which has the added effect of taking staff away from the maintenance of city-owned pro properties, particularly parks. Uh, the question is why do some commercial land owners have their boulevards maintained by the city while others pay to have their boulevards maintained? And I'd like to start by adding to the list that the mayor is asking for uh, by requesting a list of boulevards being maintained by city staff followed by notice that bylaw 1436 will be enforced within a time frame which I would say might be six weeks. Uh, to allow property owners to make arrangements to be responsible property owners and maintain their boulevards according to the bylaw. And I'd like to put that in the form of a motion. Seconded by Councillor Oates. Um, I gather, I, I need some background from staff here. I'm I looking know, at. I know the background. Pardon me? I know the background. We're going against the wishes of a previous council that staff step in to beautify the entrance to our community. Okay but uh, it just rubs me the wrong way when some some of our... Well, that, that's what councils, that's what new yep. councils do. They so. change the, the uh, regulations of old councils. Okay, so I have a mover and a seconder. Any, any questions, any comments? Staff, you okay with that? Uh, Mrs. Comas, do we... Uh, uh, I guess there'll be a pr process on how we go about doing that. Uh, yes, Your Worship, including notifications and probably yep. advertising, et cetera. So from Council's perspective, how high a priority is this, given that we are currently in our busiest summer season and this will fall probably to the operations department? I guess part of the goal is to, to deal with that really busy season. We had a, a change in weather patterns, which have put an extra load on uh, the park staff with regard to maintaining our parks and uh, I'd like to try to address part of that load by taking them away from work that could be done by property owners and uh, giving them more time to spend the attention on city-owned properties. Councilor Oates. Well, I... You know, if it's not broke, don't fix it, is one thing that comes to mind. But uh, the other thing, you know, if we do this, because, like, there's, like, there's more places to look good than look bad. And if we approve this motion, are we going to have more places that look bad than look good? Because is the presumption that the stuff that our city crews are not going to do will now automatically get done by those business owners or whoever these folks are. And if it's not done by those business owners, is the expectation that we're going to have our bylaw officers on them to make them do that? Because while it might not be consistent from the business owner's perspective, I suppose, of how it's getting done, one guy's getting the city to do it, another guy's uh, doing it himself, 
the guy that drives down the road sees a nice consistent look and i'm concerned that that gets changed if that's what we do here i could like specifically if before we before i put my hand up to say this which particular places are that that our city who does a magnificent job maintaining things are no longer going to maintain which 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 we're, we're, we're which which of these are we given a death sentence and uh, uh, you know uh, how, how do we ensure that that as we come into our high tourist season or any tourist season I guess it's not going to happen this year anyway but how do we ensure that the, the city standard that we desire is going to be there if our people ourselves are not doing it. there must be some history as to why the city just started doing it they couldn't have just did it because they liked one business over another there was i heard some reference there about it beautifying the entrance and you know and, and any of the major points that i see in, in town they look pretty nice so i'd be reluctant to sabotage that all right I wonder if we couldn't approach this on a gradual basis. Mr. Squire, you got something to say? Go ahead. Yeah, uh, thank you, Your Worship. Um, there is a certain peak period in this time of year. Uh, there's several weeks, uh, even if we're fully resourced, we just can't keep up with the grass growing. Uh, we have to prioritize. Uh, priority is on the entrance to the city, which is primarily the highway, if we can get to that. Um, this year has been a different priority down at the community park, writing the have over 300 special events down in the community park. There's Canada 150 coming up. Um, so we've been very busy. Looking at all the outside parks now, uh, they're caught up. Uh, two weeks ago, that wasn't the case. We just could not put the resources where we could. Um, other cities, what they do to sort of um, keep a consistent level of service throughout the city is what they'll do instead of um, they'll they'll contract the outside parks works out so the level is fairly consistent for us uh, we have it all in house and we try to you know look after what we can when we can um, again it's it's a resource level and there is a definite lag and that lag is uh, a couple weeks a couple weeks of not cutting a grass is, is getting up there. So um, it is difficult and it is cumbersome for staff to keep up. But uh, with the highway itself, it's evolved to the point when highways turned it over to us, um, it came with some of, the, some of the flower beds. There's a lot of infrastructure that's invested in the highway itself, such as the irrigation systems for both the flower beds and the trees and also the grass. And it's part of that in Parksville, keeping that aesthetic look, um, being primarily a resort-based community where our, our, you know, a lot of our revenue is generated from the tourism industry. So we're very conscientious of that. Um, and then obviously the community park is also very primary. And also our major playing fields up at Springwood draw a lot of attention to, uh, uh, you know, uh, whether it be a tournament or a soccer tournament or a ball field spoke quite steadily so uh, we do get stretched that's all I can emphasize but there is a time and especially as right now we, we we've caught up um, there are there's more to do obviously but there's that uh, time in the season and we just can't do it with the resources we have Councillor Powell thank you worship so maybe uh, we should also look at okay if we're doing private property mowing their grasses then maybe they should get an invoice from the city and charge for that service if they'd have to pay somebody else that an option your worship I wasn't around when the uh, when this decision was originally made but with respect to the properties, what we have been doing recently is that when a property along Highway 19A is redeveloped, then we are requiring that property owner to take over the maintenance of their uh, flower beds and, and the lawn mowing in front. Um, the Ford dealership comes to mind, um, and I'm sure there are others. 
pardon me yeah the eat fresh development is doing their own now they don't necessarily do it to the same standard the city does but they maintain their own if council would like to move forward with this um, we can certainly come back to you with a report to outline options and what it would mean and, and provide you with the information on which boulevards we are maintaining and then council can make its choice as to what it would like to do. Councilor Rhodes? That would be a little bit different than the motion, but if that's okay, if that's the understanding that that's what it is, it's a, I'd be mo way more comfortable with that for understanding there than I'd, uh, I could easily support uh, doing that. I'm okay with that. I, I didn't get very many letters uh, in the last two months from folk complaining. I did get some, and one particular letter went back to snow removal and moved on to uh, cutting grass. And what struck me at the time was that it's like giving somebody a baseball bat that beat me with. You know, you, you, have, you have these requirements that, that private owners must do. We're doing it, and yet you get these complaints. You're, get, you're still getting beaten with a baseball bat. So if, if uh, Councillor uh, Burden's motion will, will help alleviate that a bit, I don't like giving somebody a baseball bat and having them beat me with it at some point in time. So if that can be accomplished, that's the, that's the methodology, staff. We don't want to get give somebody a baseball bat to get beaten with. So just for, for clarity, what's going to come back is a report with options as opposed to a list that this is what we're going to do. Um, from my understanding of what Council, Councillor Burden actually uh, um, originally asked for, we would prepare a report providing a list of the boulevards that are currently maintained by staff and a, a uh, and we would outline options for maintenance of those boulevards, whether it is privately or publicly or in whatever okay. option. Okay, thank you. So, uh, that's it. I'm going to call the vote. All those in favor? Uh, I'll finish up. Uh, you have something else, Councillor Burden? Not quite done yet. Oh. Just a quick reminder, uh, walkabout, wheelabout on the 21st as well after the uh, dedication. Um, I don't know that I'm, I'm not sure I can talk about Canada Day in this seat. Okay. Uh, I, ha I have a number of items. I, I, I'll, go by, I'll go over them very, very quickly. Um, I want to talk briefly about the Federation of Canadian Municipalities Conference that I attended along with Councillor Salter. Um, first of all, and I gave everybody a copy of the, of the main resolutions that were passed. They were all in your mailboxes the week that I got back. The, the main focus during the four days that, uh, of this conference was infrastructure, affordable housing, and the overall issue of poverty. And, and every, every province, every, uh, every, of course, the big cities, the problems are a lot bigger than our problems. But uh, we, uh, we got an earful. We tried to talk a little bit about marijuana, but for some reason that didn't, that didn't catch on, surprisingly enough. But infrastructure certainly did. It was a focus. And uh, <laughs> it was a focus. And, and of course, the whole, the whole issue of affordable housing. And again, the bigger cities were, were, were having meetings on their own at the ministerial level. We weren't, but they were. And I guess that when you've got a population of over a million people, uh, the federal politicians better listen to you. Tomorrow morning at 9.15, I'm going to Springwood Elementary School uh, to thank the kids for their uh, Can Great Canadian Shoreline cleanup. And anybody, any other members of council who would like to accompany me, you're more than welcome. I, uh, I want to thank them and I want to encourage them to keep involved as uh, future civic leaders. And I think that that's something that, um, that we should do more of, especially with our, our young folk. And they were so keen and did, uh, did such a great job. Parksville Fire Department, the fire chief's here tonight, 75th anniversary, which is coming up, and uh, they're going to mark, mark your calendars for Saturday, July the 22nd, when the Parksville Fire Department turns 75. And the department will host a show and shine, open house from 10 to 3 p.m. at the fire hall and in the parking area between the fire station and city hall, where classic and current firefighting equipment from communities on the island will be on display. And uh, Chief Norris, You've been around for what, 35, 40, 50 years? <laughs> <laughs> Just be, okay. 
Congratulations on that, and uh, our congratulations on your 75th birthday, and we'll talk more about that in the month of July. Lastly, the Shelley Park, the Pioneer Crescent Neighborhood Residents Association will host, host a kickoff fundraising for the Shelley Park um, fundraising program on June the 24th from 12.30 to 2.30 p.m. The Shelley Park, for those of you who don't know it, is located on the corner of Shelley Road and Turner Road in Parksville, and the Neighborhood Association will have hot dogs, chicken, and soft drinks available while supplies last. So I invite you all to attend that. And I think that's about it. I don't have anything else. But um, we'll, uh, we'll meet again on July the 5th. And if uh, Councillor Patterson won't be here, we may have, might, might have put, on our, put off our discussion for later on in July with regard to the programs. Okay. Okay. Now, we've done with new business. I. I need, a, I need a mover and a seconder pursuant to Section 91E of the Community Charter Council proceed to a close meeting to consider an item relating to land. Councillor Powell, Councillor Burden, all those in favor? We're going to take a five-minute break, and we'll come back.